Hi everyone, welcome to Gentus and can you see those small white areas inside the pulp looking like some small stones? Yes, they are called pulp stones. Like stone is a hard structure, these are also hard, made up of calcium. So they are calcified masses in the pulp, so they are called pulp stones. But wait, pulp is a soft tissue, but it is surrounded by a hard tissue, dentine, which is calcified. So because these pulp stones are also calcified like dentine, so they are also called denticles. Commonly asked by our question that what is another name for pulp stones, so don't forget they are also called denticles and that can be your important short note for theory exam which can come either as pulp stones or denticles now 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 there is another term another calcified mass which can be seen in the soft tissue around the tooth another soft tissue around the tooth that is periodontal ligament in which we can see calcified masses these calcified masses are called cementicles so don't get confused cementicles are calcified masses in the periodontal ligament and denticles are calcified masses in the pulp so the topic for today's video is pulp stones or denticles. So let's see how to write for your exam. So before starting the video, quickly subscribe to Dentozen if you have not done that till now. Also give a like to this video. So first you will write what are pulp stones. They are discrete calcified masses in the pulp. They can be seen both in the crown portion and as well as root portion. So they are seen both in coronal as well as in radicular pulp. But they are more common in coronal. Now they are they can be single or multiple. We can see a single calcification or there can be multiple calcification. Now, usually they are asymptomatic, they do not cause any problem. But what if they come very close to any blood vessel or nerve of the pulp? They can put pressure on the, those structures so they can impinge nerves or blood vessels and then they can become symptomatic, they can cause pain. Now, coming to the classifications, there are two classifications. First classification, it can be true denticles or and false denticles. Now, true denticles, as the word says, that they are true to something. What they are true that they resemble dentin. How they are similar to dentine like dentine they also have dentinal tubules and odontoblastic process within those tubules now these pulp stones are rare but they are close to a pical for a root of the tooth now how they are formed if there is any herdwig epithelial root sheath remnant they will give signal to the pulp they will induce the pulp cells to differentiate into odontoblast cells and these odontoblast cells what will they do they will lay down dentine like masses inside the pulp so they are formed because of any HGRS remnants which remain inside the pulp. So those are the true pulp stones. Now what are false denticles? False pulp stones as the name says they are false. That means they do not resemble dentine. They do not have dentinal tubules. Then how do they appear? They appear like this concentric layers. That means they form around the center and th there is deposition of calcium in layers right like this so what can be that single center around which this is deposited as you can see here so that is a red area that means it's a blood vessel yes so they can form around blood vessels collagen fiber bundles or necrotic tissue inside the pulp so all these structures they act as niters that means they act as central area around which the calcium is deposited in layers concentric layers so those are false tentacles so that is the difference between true tentacles denticles they are similar to dentine false denticles they are not similar to dentine now coming to second classification as you can look in the picture according to this classification they can be free attached or embedded so what are free pulp stones free means they lie freely inside the pulp pulp, pulp ke andar freely padhe so that means they are surrounded by pulp from all the sides like this now slowly and slowly when the dentin keeps on forming secondary dentin forms here these pulp stones they get attached to the dentinal wall and then they are called attached pulp stones that means they are fused with the dentinal wall this second one as you can see it is partly in the pulp and partly it is attached to the dentinal wall now when the it is completely surrounded by dentin it goes inside the dentin like this it is called embedded when it is completely embedded inside the dentin so it is surrounded by dentin from all the sides so those are the three pulp stones based on their location based on their relationship to dentin that is free attached and embedded now how to draw the diagram first we'll draw the normal pulp structure all the histological zones four zone in odontoblast then cell free cell red zone and pulp core like this and then three different areas will draw the pulp stone that is one in the pulp that is lying freely in the pulp free pulp stones then the one which is attached to the dentinal wall here that is attached pulp stone and one which is completely embedded inside the dentin that is embedded pulp stone so you have to draw these pulp stones with your hematoxylin that is blue color so because they are calcified masses they take a blue color so that is how you have to draw the depth these pulp stone diagram now 
diffuse calcifications as you can see in the picture there can be some irregular calcifications also inside the bulb they are called diffuse calcifications so diffuse calcifications are irregular calcific deposits where they are seen they are more commonly seen in the root canals and they are less in the coronal area less in the crown part and mostly they are mostly they surround the blood vessels now coming to clinical significance of pulp stones what can they cause suppose you want to do some treatment pulp gets infected you want to remove this pulp with your instrument that means you want to go till the end of the root canal but these pulp stones are lying there what will they do they will obstruct your path they will not let you go at the end so they can obstruct the root canals and they can interfere with the treatment so they can complicate the root canal treatment that is endodontic treatment of the pulp of the root canal so that is very important if you think your instrument is not going then you can take the radiograph and you can look for these radiopaque structures inside the pulp which can be pulp stones so now we come to the summary of the pulp stones so what are pulp stones they are also called denticles they are discrete calcified masses they can be classified as true denticles when they resemble dentinal tubules they have dentinal tubules and odontoplastic process false denticles when they do not resemble dentin they are not similar to dentin but they are forming in concentric layers around the nidus second classification they can be free when they are lying freely inside the pulp attached when they are attached to the dentin they and embedded when they are completely inside the dentin they are surrounded by dentin from all the sides now there can also so be diffuse calcifications those are irregular calcification and their clinical significance is that they can complicate the root canal treatment so let's check what have you learned other name for pulp stones pulp stones similar to dentin are called pulp stones surrounded by dentin entirely false denticles form around what structure irregular calcifications of pulp are given what name so that is all for this video if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning and keep smiling good luck for your exams see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye